the name of Jesus. Amen. So what about the Holy Spirit? It's Pentecost. What does he look like? You ever wonder what the Holy Spirit looks like? I mean, when he's not coming down as a dove at Jesus' baptism. Besides that, what does he look like? What does he do? What's he up to? What's his work? Well, you remember that time the font was up here and the pastor poured water and the word on those little kids? Holy Spirit. You remember that time pastor stood in front of you and said to you, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit. And you remember that time pastor stood in the pulpit and told you that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again from the dead for your salvation? Holy Spirit. You remember that time you came to the Lord's altar and you heard the words of Jesus given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins and you thought to yourself, my sins are forgiven? Holy Spirit. And that time you were reading the Bible and you went, oh, that sounds like what pastor told me, how this relates to Jesus. Holy Spirit. You get the idea? Where the word and gifts of Jesus are, that's the Holy Spirit at work. The Holy Spirit's job is to deliver to you all the gifts of Jesus. The salvation he won for you on the cross by his death and his resurrection, the life everlasting that he gives to you, that's given to you by the Holy Spirit through the water and the word and the body and the blood. That's the Holy Spirit's job. That's what it looks like when the Holy Spirit is at work. Now, the strange thing is, what happened at Pentecost seems pretty awesome. Rushing wind, tongues of fire, all the apostles speaking in different languages. But what people do with that is they say, wow, look at the Holy Spirit at work, and they separate him from Christ. In other words, they, they try to see the signs, and they look for wonders and miraculous things and say, that's really God at work. And they look for, for feelings in their heart. They look around at their lives and say, how can I interpret this to see what God is saying to me through the Holy Spirit? Like kind of when you look up at clouds and you try to make shapes out of them or figure out what they look like. The Holy Spirit is, what's going on in my life? And what's the, what, how does this feeling, what's this, how's God talking to me? But that's not what happened on Pentecost. The rushing wind and the tongues of fire and the speaking and all those different languages, that was to get everybody's attention. And once the Holy Spirit had everybody's attention, Peter got up and preached a sermon. So I guess you could say that the Holy Spirit's pretty much doing the same thing today that he did back then. And if you read on in chapter 2 in Acts, beyond the, the, the gospel reading that we had, Peter's sermon goes on to say, listen, this Holy Spirit thing you're seeing here, this is God saving you. And here's how. Because he sent his son and you crucified him, but the father raised him up on the third day. And now that's our salvation. Everyone's like, wow, that's, that, what do we do now? Peter says, be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. And on Pentecost, 3,000 people were baptized and received the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit and the forgiveness of sins and the certainty of everlasting life. Because Peter preached that. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's how he does it. His job is to deliver, to bestow, to give, to make sure that you have all that Jesus has for you. Now, this is why Jesus, as he's talking to the disciples about the coming of the Holy Spirit, says to them, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, hold it fast, treasure it, cling to it. If anyone doesn't love me, he won't cling to my word and treasure it and hold it fast. So how about you on Pentecost? Do you love Jesus? doubt anybody would say no but do you cling to his word do you hold it fast do you treasure it above all things when you hear the word preached when you hear the scriptures read do you hang on every word listening for the comfort and salvation of christ or does it kind of go in one ear and out the other and you don't remember two days later what the sermon was even about or what we heard in church when jesus speaks his word to love one another as i have loved you do you say to yourself, that's an awesome word. What a great new commandment the Lord gave until I see the person I don't like and then I don't want to love them. Do you hold fast to the gifts of Jesus and his word? Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood. Or is the sacrament something you can sort of catch on the fly when you're not doing anything else on the weekend and maybe have a little bit of free time? And the point is, if we look at our lives, we'll see that we are to hold fast, to cling to, to treasure Christ's word, but we don't. 
And so what's the answer to that? What do we, what do we say if it says, if, if you love Jesus, you'll keep his word, but we don't? Holy Spirit, because that's his job, to bring to you forgiveness for all of that and to continue to fill your ears with the words of Jesus so that you don't forget and so that you continue to grow in faith toward God and his promises and in love toward one another, to learn to forgive others, to learn to cling to Christ's word, to learn to do exactly as Jesus says, to hold fast to his word and cling to it and treasure it. All your life, your whole life long, that's the Holy Spirit's job, over and over and over, to call you to repentance for the things that take you away from God's word, and then to fill your ears with God's word, to remind you of your baptism, to call you to the supper, to give you over and over the gifts that deliver the salvation of Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit at work. Coming, says Jesus, to give you peace. Not as the world thinks of peace, like nothing's going crazy right this second kind of peace, but a true and genuine peace, of a clean conscience before God and the hope and confidence of your being raised from the dead and having everlasting life. That's the spirit at work. He calls you into the faith the way he calls little ones into the faith through the waters of holy baptism and through the the word and the supper. He continues to strengthen you in that faith your whole life long. And then on the last day, he will breathe into you and raise you up from the dead and give you life everlasting. That's what the Holy Spirit is all about. That's what he looks like. That's what his work looks like. That's what he does. So happy Pentecost in the name of Jesus.